way that this movie is shot is the way that I've wanted to shoot every movie in my brain and haven't been able to until this film. From the beginning, one of the main goals with the Suicide Squad was to keep it alive, keep it visceral, and keep it real. One of the pathways to doing that is the way we use the cameras, the way we're able to use the red and our other rigs to be able to pull us together in a way that makes it feel as if it's real. In the past, the technology has defined the types of movies. So if you think about the invention of sound, the cameras were huge. But nowadays, I think the guys at Red are at the vanguard of this. You can now say, this is the requirements of the movie. What's the technology that we need to do it? James and Henry working together have really come up with a new dynamic shooting style, which really wasn't possible before the creation of Red's new cameras. Nearly every shot in this movie is moving. And not only is it moving, but we want to get in really close and around people and between people. And you just can't do that with a bulky camera. What's exciting now is that the guys at Red have achieved the highest possible quality. That's without a doubt can be demonstrated. And at the same time, at the smallest possible camera. What I like about the team at Red is they think differently about how they go about doing what they do. We're always getting exactly what I envision, sometimes better than what I envision. And that's what made this movie like by far the most enjoyable process I've had making a film. Boom! James Gunn is sick. Has boundless imagination. You're watching the master at work. He is in his element in this genre. James is such a visionary director. Okay, great. It's such a new take on an established franchise. Let's get it. The movie's gigantic. I mean, it really is the biggest movie I've ever made, and I wanted to do most of it practically, and we did. Yeah, Stepping into the set's crazy. James is really a genius. He's really good at creating an atmosphere where things come to life. He took the camera and the actors to a place where the audience would be like, this is really happening. It's that visceral. You're hearing the explosions, you're smelling the gunpowder, and that just ups the ante. Well, leaving your arm behind. Like that, that's it. Okay, great. James's specialty is unique characters. <laughs> like a bloodbath to start the day. And surreal environments. We shot in Panama. Everywhere you looked, it was incredible. It's brightly colorful and beautiful. I remember thinking it's just gonna look wicked on screen. <laughs> This is the man who makes films that blow people's minds when it comes to visual spectacle, but then it's all grounded in character development, sprinkled with humor. He does throw polka dots at people. Superhero movies should be fun and should be bonkers. Yeah. That is your hand, very good. He knows how to do the comedy things, the ha-has, and all the actions, the boom-booms, and combine those to make a nice, tasty snack of dopeness. What's that true as a crazy one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why are you in your underwear? I was emboldened by Warner Brothers' faith in me to be able to do whatever we wanted with this movie. This is great! It is everything I wanted to be. Yo, is this a dog? I'm gonna go with Afghan Hound. Is it a werewolf? Yo, they sat me next to a werewolf? Yo, let me out! I love seeing a movie in IMAX, and I love seeing a big old huge film on a big screen. So this is the famous Suicide Squad. That is a pure cinematic experience. If there was ever a movie to go to the cinema to see, it is this one. The scale of this thing is huge. It's packed full of action. Yeah, plot twists. He does throw polka dots at people. 
this a massive graphic novel brought to life. People are going to be able to see all of the magic and all of the wackiness of DC Comics brought to the big screen in a way like it's never been done before. Being able to create the Suicide Squad in 4 IMAX specifically and to be able to shoot it in that aspect ratio was very exciting to me. It's a great balance of those moments of poignancy and heart and humor and badassery. This film is gonna blow people's minds. It's such an experience. Wow. And it's definitely worth doing with good sound and a big screen and a big crowd. You're never going to fully experience the Suicide Squad unless you see it in the theater. To be able to see it in IMAX is the best way to see this film. This is suicide. Well, that's kind of our thing. The Suicide Squad really is the biggest movie I've ever made, and I've made big movies. The scope of the project is just going to be massive. You know you're in good hands. What the f It's like a big graphic novel brought to life. Action, plot twist. You go along for a hell of a ride. This film is going to blow people's minds. Three, two... What are you guys doing? You, we're, we're here to save you. The Suicide Squad is just a twisted fantasy of characters. Oh, so sorry. All of these folks are where they're at because they've done some pretty bad stuff. There's a lot of fun in characters who aren't really heroes. Holly is at this heightened level. It's just mayhem. This time around, it's just a lot more fun, a lot more lightness. I mean, you have characters who can talk to rats. I'm in a scene with a shark. Hand! Yes, that is your hand. Very good. We're all gonna die. Treating all of this as if it was absolutely real, and that's what makes it fun to make. What James does really well is make the most impossible imagery look very real. He just pulls off the bizarre in such a spectacular and cinematic way. It is really visceral, really alive, brightly colorful and beautiful, but it's also very dirty and gritty and has all of those elements as well. The badassery of these characters makes for interesting dichotomies. I cherish peace with all my heart. I don't care how many men, women and children I need to kill to get it. The spectacle, the humor. Yo, is this a dog? I'm gonna go with Afghan Hound. It really goes the extra mile. It has a great story. James can take the worst of the bunch and make me know and care about them. I'm a superhero! Everyone gets their moment. There's a lot of emotion. I'm gonna get you out of here alive. I'm going to get you out of here alive. This is suicide. Well, that's kind of our thing. All that gigantic, real ride funness combined with the heart that the movie has gives these unique characters the sort of reverence and love that they deserve. That's where the magic is. Suicide Squad was exciting to me because we're going to introduce more DC characters than any film has ever done. Forgot the rat. <laughs> the Suicide Squad aren't really heroes. Bloodsport is quite a um, grumpy guy. I'm not shaking the rat's hand. He's in prison for putting Superman in the ICU. He just has barely enough humanity to say, Ugh, all right, I'll go fight. Whereas Peacemaker says, Nothing like a bloodbath to start the day. He's like a douchey bro, but a patriot at the same time. He says, if it adds to peace, you need to kill people. I got a clean shot on the only one in the office. Holly is a catalyst of chaos. I wanted to see the Harley Quinn that I love from the comics and the animated shows kick ass in a way like she never had before. With James, it felt close to the source material. I think King Shark was my favorite character. It's just really stupid, but it's also really kind. Ah! Polka Dot Man is a product of uh, experiment gone wrong. 
Ratcatcher 2 controls and she can talk with rats. Oh, calm down with the rats! Mongal, she has super strength, super speed. Ah! She's just like a super bitch. Captain Boomerang, she's like the first dude you want to have a drink with, but the last one you want to be left at the bar with. Savant, he's a distinctive looking chap. He's a very quiet, very powerful guy. So this is the famous Suicide Squad. Love him or hate him. Oh, so sorry. These are your brothers and sisters for the next few days. I lean more into the kinder elements of Flag. Blackguard, the original character, has like a really long purple ponytail. There's nothing cooler than being in the Suicide Squad. TDK is just a guy whose arms and legs come off. That's his only power. Formidable? No. Annoying? Yes. I love your accent. American women all love accents. If you imagine the most sexy man or woman or an animal, a goose, and then give this person or animal blonde hair and a very large toothpick, you would have Chaffler. Characters considered throwaways or worthless are very worthwhile and have incredible meaning and value. I'm a superhero! People will stick with us and pray for us to survive. I'm gonna get you out of here alive. I'm going to get you out of here alive. What I didn't see coming was the emotional depth. And that is what the movie's about to me. The most brazen thing about the film is the special moments between characters. It's just suicide. Well, that's kind of our thing. I think these are characters that anyone can fall in love with and anyone can hate. I love the whole idea of the anti-heroes. I sort of like playing the badass. Cruel, decadent. I've been working all my life to play evil genius. Boom! There's so many great characters in DC, and being able to see different expressions of those characters, that's so fun to me. You're a hero to me. I got me confused. Your mission is to infiltrate and destroy Project Starfish. Successfully complete the mission, you get 10 years off your sentence. No problem. Oh, I call it Stato the Conqueror. I love your accent. Uh-huh.